Hey, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is. Welcome. This is Jelle, growing bonsai, and I have, have and I have a whole bunch of young large. All right. I admit I messed up. I've made mistakes before, but I've never messed up a video like I've messed up this video. I wanted to make a nice video showing you how do I create a forest? What are the concepts of a forest and what are the basic styling rules, if you will? And I made this little forest about two, three weeks ago. And I waited with the final edit to take some shots of the trees as they are growing, because I know that you appreciate the fact that trees grow after the work done. So something is wrong with the forest. And I keep wondering what is wrong with the forest. Before I tell you what's wrong, let's just jump into the video that I was editing last night and when I was really getting awkward feelings about this forest. So these are the European large and I bought them for another project and probably later in summer, you'll see an update on that one. But these are left over. That was some substrate falling down. So these were left over and I have decided to make a little forest out of it. And now I'm not going to make a forest of trees that are all the same height, the same width, all placed nicely. No, I'm going to make it a little bit more interesting. Often what you see is that these trees are placed pretty much evenly spaced. Most of the time people do remember that the forest needs to have a peak and a lower area. For this, I have a fairly shallow, fairly wide container. And in order to attach the trees into the container, normally you'd make a mesh of I don't know, chopsticks or other pieces of bamboo, but I don't have any. So what I'm going to use instead, I do have this mesh. I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the pot. And from here, I'm going to put wires going up. It is nice outside. So I'm going to sit outside and do that. Now, if we want to make it a little bit more interesting, we take the same planting tray, but we start to lean the trees out a little bit at the outside. We put a little bit of movement in and we plant multiple trees close to each other. And here and there a bit of space between individual trees. So what you see is what you then get is a little bit more interesting because trees never grow all the same, right? Trees that are on the outside, they want to grow to the light. Trees that are in the inside also want to grow to the light, but they go up. This typically is much fatter tree and much taller than the rest. Then the one next to it is the second largest. And together, these two form the basis of the forest. Everything else is just supporting the group. Now, if you want to make it a little bit more interesting than this, you go for a group of two sets of trees. So you say, I have a group here. And I have another group here. You could imagine there's a little pathway going in between the trees. All these seedlings come from a commercial nursery. They grow these things um, for planting, forest plantings. So these have just been ripped from the soil, keeping them alive, but not per se looking at the lower branches or at thicknesses or anything like that. They've just been selected on height. Um, let me pull off these out and sort them by size. How about we try something? I would love to get this video in my top five videos with 10,000 likes. Hit the like button. Thank you. So I've got thick wire and thinner wire. This is two and a half and one and a half millimeters. And for the two and a half millimeters, this I'm going to use to attach the mesh to the pot. And maybe I'll have one or two coming out for stability. But this is the thin stuff. I'm going to use that on the mesh to attach the bonsai. Give it a little twist so it is attached to the bottom of the mesh and ready to go. Right, so what I've done, I've prepared two groups. There's a group here, one, two, three, four, five trees with a sixth tree hanging in the back and a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven trees in a group here. Now, if we are creating a forest with two groups, Basically, there's a couple of things that are important. The number of trees that we use should be odd, ideally. What I'm going to do, and what I already mentioned, is a combination of six plus seven 
which is 13 trees. Now when you make a double planting, the other thing is that the two largest trees are in the same group. So if I say this is my largest tree, and this is my second largest tree, they're both in this grouping. Then the third largest tree will be the largest in my other grouping. If you want to go all the way by the Japanese rules, you say that this one is a height of 10, ten. this one is the height of 8, and this one is the height of 7. So basically, this one steps down 20%, and then this one steps down about 12%. Everything else that you plant in here should be a maximum of the half of the tallest. So about 5 or 4 tall. Then of course we're going to make sure that all the trunks are visible from the front. So if I'm looking at the forest I want to see every single trunk. I want to avoid that tree trunks cross. And I want to make sure that there is uneven distances between trunk. And then everything else is grouped around trying to not obscure the view from the front to any of the trunks, but placing some all the way in the back to create perspective. And of course when I say sort to size, um, I mean the thickness of the trunk, not the tallness of the plants, because you can trim them back quite easily, but increasing the thickness is difficult. Um, I have been fairly lucky, so I have three which are on of average size. These I'm not going to use, I'm going to use them for something else. And then I have these two, which are actually clearly th thicker than the third thickest. So these two are my two ma main trees. This is going to be my second main tree. Then I have a whole bunch of smaller ones. And luckily in the bunch were also some very small ones. This is nice because for a good forest, you of course want a wide range of trunks to make it look like a real forest with all the different si sizes that you will find in the forest. Now what I need to do is trim all the tops back. I'm going to prune the big one first because that's going to set the height of my forest as a whole and defines the rest of all the sizes. So this one is going to be fairly tall. Um, what I'm looking for is a branch that can use be used as an extension, something like this, so that if the tree grows out further this will close and you won't see it all that easily. I need to be careful, I don't want to cut the back branch. So this is, this is my new leader. This branch I'm going to remove because there's a nice back branch which I'm also going to trim back a little bit. And then basically I'm just going to reduce these for now to handle the tree a little bit more easily. And I'm not going to use all these long branches anyway. So this is basically the start of my forest, the first branch. Note, I'm pruning these. And the buds are still closed, but these came from a commercial grower and they hold these cooled until planting. So that means that until yesterday these were kept dormant at 3-4 degrees Celsius. Now that they've been taken out and temperatures are much warmer outside than that they were in the cooling house, these will start pushing within a couple of days. So I need to do this quite rapidly. I need to finish this planting today or tomorrow. Get it all planted up. Trim the roots back because they're nice and dormant. I can still go quite far. And then within a matter of days they will start pushing and they'll get green. Then I'll also know whether I'm successful in making a forest planting. And these lower branches look like they have been getting too little light and are dead already. So I might as well just remove them. This one is still alive. That one is still alive. This one's dead. Right, so this is the first tree in the forest planting. Trimming back the roots. I told you, I'm going to be quite drastic because I'm not too concerned. This really is a nice and dormant tree still. And if I do this well now, then it's easier to plant up. And assuming they survive, they have a very nice shallow root ball, which makes for easier planting later on when I want to go to a pot. 
This of course is just a training pot, right? This is not the permanent pot. So now I need to pay attention. This is the front and the back. Let's not reverse them. This is the group of one, two, three, four, five, and one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's this one. So this tree is going to be in the pot at this spot. Let's do this for another 13 trees. So the next tree that I'm going to make is the second largest. Logically, this one has to be shorter. Then one of these two will have to be the new leader. So it's going to go down all the way up to there. Then of course, here as well, prune back the long branches. While you're doing this sort of work, make sure you keep the roots nice and wet. You don't want the roots to dry out because then the finer roots might die on you. Not aiding recovery. Yes, this is drastic root trimming. I do agree. So if you are concerned with the amount of roots that I'm pruning, don't be concerned about just leaving more on, right? Just do what you feel comfortable with. You don't need to follow exactly how other people do it. Make up your own mind, think what you feel comfortable with, and that's what you do. So this is a very young one, and with these very young and thin ones, I'm trying to go as short as possible. So normally a tree, the bigger it gets, the thicker the trunk. So in a forest, the shortest trees are also the thinnest. If you compare that to one of my main trees, look at that. That's in right ratio, right? So this tree that I still need to prune, now needs to be somewhere along this height. So I'm pruning it back here at this side branch. Now there's one main root, the so-called tap root, and that's the one that you see here, very big one. That one I'm taking out first. So and when I prune it, I go in from the bottom, sliding up any potential roots that are here. I look around, no, there's no other roots that I'm cutting. So this is now gone. What you're now left with is already quite reasonable roots to use. This can stand flat on the table just based on the roots alone. Now I'm just going to trim them back a little bit, but it doesn't need a lot more pruning than this. So this is what you're left with. And all of this has been pruned off. This is basically um, just my normal expanded chill with baked clay and bark. But what I've added in this case is uh, cocoa peat. And cocoa peat comes in big dry blocks. And once you put water to it, it expands and falls apart. And it creates a nice consistent environment for the roots to grow in. But also it basically gels together a little bit in the pot. So the structure of the substrate afterwards is a lot more stable than what I am having with my normal substrate. So I've divided the trees up. The two biggest are here. And then there is another five trees for this group of seven. And I've got the leftover trees for the group of six on this side. Let's put it together. Putting these things together really is not easy. Um, it's not easy to get everything stable and sitting in its place. So I'm probably going to switch off the camera in a second and I'm just going to work on this um, because this really is engineering 101 for yourself and you need to figure out how to do this. Um, it is always a little bit iffy. I start with the biggest tree, keeping in mind what the front should be. I wanted to, to lean out a little bit and I just attach the tree like this to the substrate. And this is not going to be the final connection, this is just going to be putting it in place. And then later on I will add some more support between the trees. What you need to do is you need to start removing branches as they interfere with the rest of the planting. So this one sits here and all these branches can go because this side of the tree is where my number two tree grows. And this of course competes with that tree. And in nature you would not have another tree sitting so close with side branches on the inside. Right, with over half of the trees planted you can see which direction it's going. This is going to be pulled up a little bit straighter like this. Um, once the substrate is in this will be much more secure. I'm not going to wire out the trees, I'm going to let them establish first for a season. The reason is I've pruned a lot of the roots, I've pruned major tips on top of the branches and I want to make sure that the trees are well and healthy before I start wiring because if I start wiring now I damage the branches and with that I might end up killing very young branches which now are still good but I am going to go through and I'm going to trim off all the long growth that was in the inside 
that is potentially interfering with another tree, just like that. This is going to go in, I want it to grow out. This is a long branch. This is longer than the one below. This is a very heavy branch, I'm going to make it very short. So, this forest has now been put together. It has been pruned. As said before, I'm not going to... Oh, uh, hang on. Stop, stop, stop. No, no. Uh, one moment there. Um, you say it is all done, but I'm going to just look here at the drawing and what did we say? We're going to go for two groups. Yeah, that's fair enough. But we also said the two tallest trunks are in the same group and the third tallest is in the second group. Now, if I look at this, the tallest, the second tallest, the third tallest, that's not right. I need to correct this. I'm very sorry. Um, you can make plans all you want, but if you then don't stick to your plan, you're going to make a mess of things. Right, so what I have here is a group. It's nice. The distances between the trees are all different. There are nice differences in height as well as girth. Not as great as I would want to, but good enough to start off with. You can see here I've put some very small trees here in the back to provide the feeling of depth in the planting. So these trees are much further away than the ones here in the front. But I need to swap this tree and that tree. Guess I'm just going to have to dig them out. shorter one goes into this group nice and tight then somewhere there so now we have done what we've said that we would do i've taken a whole bunch of large seedlings i've planted them as a forest planting with the tallest tree the second tallest tree and the third tallest tree providing the basis. In between there's some space and the trees are in irregular distances from each other. Outer trees also hang out a little bit whereas the inner trees shoot, stand up a little bit more. That way it looks a little bit more of a natural forest from the beginning. Now I'm going to let this grow. I've taken off a lot of roots. It is still very early in the year. The buds are starting to pop so I have Good hopes that this will all root. Do not prune larches in this manner if they have started to push their buds out and they've started to grow. This really is possible because they're still dormant. Now this is going to go in a shaded spot in my garden for the first couple of weeks. I'm going to make sure it doesn't dry out, doesn't get too hot. Now I made these nice sketches right in the, uh, in the video on how the tree should be positioned with number one, two, number two, three, and the number three tree. And as I was thinking about this and I was searching, I went to one of my bonsai books, the Bonsai Techniques by Naka, and I was right initially when I put the biggest tree, the second biggest tree, and the third biggest tree. The concept of course is you have a tree, it throws out seeds. One of the seeds starts growing here, and this little clump of trees is formed by the seed that lands here. Typically that means that this is the second bigger tree, biggest tree. This one also throws seeds and somewhere close by another tree finds shelter and it also grows up. But it stays a little bit shorter than the one that grows up in the open field. So the concept that I said number one, that's right. Number two however is there and number three is there. The worst part of this is, when I was initially putting the forest together, I did it the right way. So I was giving you a poor advice, then I did it in the right way, then I corrected my mistake, or what I thought was a mistake, in the wrong way, and I put the forest together in the wrong way. In any case, rules are there to be broken, don't take them too strictly, just know when you want to do it according to the traditional balanced feeling of Japanese bonsai styling, as recommended by John Naka in Bonsai Techniques 1, this tree should be a little bit bigger than that tree. Height of 10, height of 8, height of 7, and everything else is 4, 5 or 6 high. The rest remains valid. You have 
a number of clearly bigger trees, younger trees that form the perimeter of your forest, and a few very short trees in the back that gives you the feeling of depth in your forest. Now this forest is just going to be left alone and grow. This is not a bonsai forest yet, this is just a first starter. For the season I'm going to let it grow. I'm going to prune back a little bit in the tops, otherwise the bottom branches will get way too weak and I can't do anything with it. And in late fall or in early spring I'll go through the whole forest, prune it out, wire it out, position it, so that all the branches are in an equal fashion. You can typically do this also when you're first putting it together, but I prefer to do it a little bit slower. Let this give this a chance to settle in, root in, and then do the final positioning of all the trees and particularly the branches. Anyway, it's been a bit of a messy video. I'm so sorry about it. It is, however, the reality of doing bonsai. You work, you work on your tree, and afterwards you think, I knew better than that. Sorry, mistakes do happen. I hope this learned I hope you learned something from it. I hope you got something from it.